Hello and welcome to Florio Models. Here we are on Friday the 5th of June 2020. First of all, big thank you to everybody who joined us on the live show last night, me and the team. Thank you so much for all the kind feedback on that one. As I say, great show. Tried a slightly different format, trying to restructure it and keep it going again. As I say, we've sort of stopped the COVID sort of free-for-all ones that we were doing, which were very laid back and informal, uh, and trying to put a little bit of structure in with those ones. So glad you enjoyed with that one. Don't forget, if you do like the totally informal talking rubbish and all the rest of it that we tend to do, we will be live with you tomorrow night on Saturday night at between seven and whenever we get to finish as well. So if you want to see us messing around, talking junk and all the rest of it, join in with the chat, please feel free to do with that one. But anyway, it's a great show last night. So uh, thanks to the guys for helping me out on that one as always. So today, to be honest with you, it's been quite a busy day. I'm happy to report that at last, my mask set has turned up for the B17. So now we can actually push on with the masks, uh, with the B17 a little bit. So she's here, she's been like this for the last week, okay. So the reason I took a little bit of a dramatic pause with that one was not only because I needed to get on with the actual VC10, but also I wanted time for things to dry, fillers to dry, things like that, so we can go around now and we can do all the rescribing, a little bit of re-riveting and sorting out all the little bits. The other thing as well, I needed to get all the clear parts installed and whilst I'm not a mass fan of mask sets, I didn't fancy doing the turrets because obviously you've got the top turret and the ball turret underneath incredibly complex and I tried to do it myself and I lost, lost the will to live at that point. So anyway, I cheated and I got a P mask set for it. So we've got these ones. So this should speed up things a lot easier. We can actually get the turrets all done. Once the turrets are done, we can actually get the glasswork fitted onto this one, get it into primer, and then obviously we can push on putting on the gorgeous coat onto that one, so forth and so on. So expect next week plenty of work on the B17 to make our way through. So a big thanks to Matt at PM Stores for getting me that one in. As I said, the BC10 uh, is, well, yes, it's getting there. I tell you what, it's starting to feel heavy. So you know there's a lot of filler involved. I know we put quite a lot up the front here to reshape the entire front end of it, which I think looks fantastic. I'm hoping this bit of filler will be the last stage of it now. And you know, that should be it. This should be now a case of just giving this another rub down and then priming and we'll be ready then to start adding a lot of the details. As I said before, because we've got to rescribe this one, re-rivet it, and then obviously we've got to add a lot of scratch built details all over this strengthening plate, so forth and so on. It's easier to do it like this than it is with the wings on, because the thing is, as soon as we start getting the wings on so forth and so on this thing becomes an absolute monster so it's very very difficult uh, to do detail work on it when you're actually to this size okay so what we're thinking is hopefully that wing does fit there we go uh, that hopefully we can actually get it all done and then we can put it together then we'll go through paint and all stuff like that but generally it's coming along really really nicely as promised part one is up with you right now on this one and I've got a little thing here uh, with it on. So this is it. So this is part one of it going up there. Obviously really part one covers the build. Uh, what we're going to do to it, we know that it's not a K2 uh, VC10 and everything else like that. We know it's got shape issues and all these different things in it. So with this particular part, we really look at obviously removing parts from the sprue. Sounds simple, not with a Mac 2 kit, it's not. Sanding, cleaning, taking care of these things and then working out, as you see down in here, what we're going to do to the nose because we needed to drop it by about sort of nine mil uh, to make it in the right alignment. So we've had to cut the front off. Part two, which will be up on Monday, covers the entire how to hack a model in half and basically thinks, oh God, I've just ruined a 90 quid kit. Okay, but yeah, hopefully we haven't. So, um, and then obviously what I'm gonna do is next week will be a little bit of quick fire rounds. We've got then parts three and four gonna be up next week as well, which will really get you to this stage, okay? Um, part three especially talks a lot about sanding. You know, again, it's one of those things, we often talk about how things get lost in the hobby these days, sanding and filling. So I've done a real 30 minutes on how to get sanding and filling, knowing when to use filler, when just to sand away, um, scrape cleaning, uh, how to use your sanding equipment. Because a lot of people just whack it heavy handed with a sander and make more damage than actually anything else. So we talk all about that one. Um, again, I'm gonna transfer that into a bite-sized video at some point as well. So that one will come down the line, but I've got to re-edit it to be obviously be a bite-sized video because at the moment it's a bit a little bit long-winded and also it talks about the kit. So I need to edit all of that so it just talks about sanding. 
but generally she is coming together now i'm really happy at how we've done it we did a test fit of the glass work earlier that's looking good as well so we've got a nice profile as well with the glass work we've done a little bit of adjustment with that as well so generally very very happy with it it'll be one of those things at the moment it seems to be taking forever because it's just clean up and dust and dirt we should be seeing the back of that after this weekend and then we can just be into that thing now of pushing forward with like rescribing, re-riveting, adding all that scratch detail, which actually be a lot of fun. I'm going to show a lot about that in this build as well. So expect to see a couple of detail parts on making your own bits to add to it and stuff like that. So if you ever wanted to see scratch building, add in detail, things like that, that's definitely one of the videos you want to have a look at with that one. As I say, part one is up right now. You can get that one. It's on the forum. It's on the main site. And then obviously members, you'll get part two on Monday. And as I say, a quick fire I'll probably put another two parts up next week because obviously we'll be working on the B17 and the B17 will be pushing forward as well with that one. Uh, also talking of bite size you can probably see we have hopefully we've got a camera above us we sort of do we have a very clean very nice looking B24. Now if you were watching last night's show you would have seen that we were uh, talking about this particular build purely because we got it down because it was covered in dust and somebody said about how would you clean up your model so I've done a video onto it and you can see that right now Hello and welcome to Flory Models Bite Size so today we're looking at cleaning your model now I know this is a little bit extreme as you can see this guy down here in front of us um, admittedly is it probably a little bit more dusty than most of your ones but it is the age-old problem about keeping your models dust free okay glass cabinets sealed units whichever way is obviously the best thing but if they are on top of the shelf they do tend to go a little bit like this and if i flip it over you can see it should look like that and obviously we are absolutely covered in dust so how do i go about cleaning them okay so the first thing you want to be is extremely careful obviously these things are very delicate parts so you've got things like gun turrets which mine aren't stuck on props which mine are glued on because to be honest I get falling off so I've glued them in place now but if you've got any loose bits to start with that can come off your model really really easy I suggest taking them away because phase two basically brushing um, is going to be the thing where you're going to end up knocking bits off probably okay so just be very mindful of that also working out exactly where you can hold the model safely it might seem silly but holding it around the middle here, you've got the waist guns. I'm just as likely to knock those off. So we're going to hold it probably on the wing. But then again, I've got a lot of nose weight in this. So just be mindful about causing cracks and stresses and things like that actually on the wing system as well. So think about where you're going to hold it safely. Okay. So first up, brushing. There's loads of different brushes on the market. And I've got here, it's a very old anti-static big old brush. And again, by this one, you can have it long and very, very soft. And literally you can just... If we just grab it here, you can probably see we can dust it like this to start with. And the great thing about having it very long bristles like this is that when you're dusting like this, it's not really going to damage anything too much. OK, so it is that little thing of the old feather duster effect of just flicking right the way over it. And as you can see, we get a lot off, but it's still very, very dusty. OK, so that is attack number one, literally going down through it like that. OK, and if we just do the back here, I'm going to do half a model and leave the other half full as good as I can get it. OK, so what you can do with this particular type and other brushes do do them as well. You can shorten them and make it a little bit stiffer. So obviously when it's doing it now, it's properly giving it a brush and coming from it from different angles. But again, being mindful of props and all those things literally like that okay and in most cases for light just you know generally every perhaps few uh, weeks or months you could just come along with your model and give it this type of thing and it's probably going to be enough to keep it dust free this has been in the studio to be honest up there for probably the last nine years so the trouble is it's incredibly grounded but not only is it dust this has got environmental dust from the studio. So we're thinking filler, probably lots of it, because obviously sanding filler, stuff like that, but also airbrushing. So you've probably got primer particles and paint particles and lacquer particles going through the air and landing onto it. And they're going to attach themselves a lot more, okay? So when you look at it like this, I think it was bent a gun, close. That's what we're talking about, holding it in the middle. Um, you can see we're pretty much, you know, you've got, you know, a lot of people probably be okay with that, but it needs just that little bit more. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna work along the top of the fuselage here. Okay, and again, we've got aerials and you can see where it, it's, you're having to be very, very sort of careful with it, okay? 
So that's it. So when you get to props on the front, very lightly, just getting in there, giving them a go around just like that. Now, normally as well, you could just use your air compressor, okay? Using your airbrush with just air in it and blasting it as well, okay? That's enough to get the air off. But again, this is probably stuck down. So phase two, is literally you can wash it off. So what we got here is just normal tap water. There's nothing in this whatsoever. And we have a small sponge. And say it's the smallest one I could find in the kitchen that was halfway clean. And then what we're using just with normal water, we can then just go over the entire model. And again, because you've sealed it down and hopefully it's all nice, but you can probably get an idea of how manky this is. You can just go along with water like this and then again just the tops of these engines okay and you're getting in and you can use smaller bits of sponge and all the rest of it i don't know if the missus wants this one back okay but as you can see that's gnarly and horrible and all the rest of it and you get it in but what you want to use is just water like that wring it all out and then what we're going to do is going over it again Okay, and we're trying to go a little bit with airflow and things. Okay, and we've still got dirt coming off of it and all of this stuff. So then what we'll do is we'll start working our way down in here. And again, we've got various aerials and things sticking out of this. So we've got to be a little bit mindful. But again, we can just work our way through. In theory, I'll tell you what, we need a smaller sponge. So we're going to cut this in too just to make this a little bit easier to work with okay all right then what we're going to do is just do these backs and again now this is all painted completely with acrylics so we have to be very careful now this here is going to come off it's an aerial so what i'm going to do is i'm going to cut it off and then what we'll do is we will reattach it afterwards because I'm going to lose it anyway so I might as well do it on my terms rather than anything else okay so now we're just doing the side bits because obviously we've got dust down on the sides and now we can go properly over that area and again we're trying to do sort of half rather the entire thing okay so we're just going to try and squeak in half and half just down in here okay and then again a little bit tricky because we've got props and all things like that under here so we're just trying to come along okay for these all these areas and round and we just go over them again okay so that's really nice all right and then you just need to dry off so to be honest with you kitchen towel and cotton buds is your best bet for this one as well okay so what we're going to do now is just going to come in just going to give us a light rub right the way over now even if you've used my clay wash chances are if you're not fiddling around with it too much and agitating it you know and brushing it and all things like that it should come away but you can see this is still dirt coming off of this and it's still grimy and horrible okay and again we're just trying to get down these areas around the front and around here over the top okay around these areas and all down in here all right so that's pretty good and then what you can do now is literally just come along it's just air I have to be careful we've got primer in this and we're just going to dry it down now with air so don't pull too much <laughs> just to dry it off and it's important to dry it off because this is all acrylics on this and it's got wash and stuff like that. So we don't want it looking too wet too long. Okay, so that's fine. 
The other thing you can do, and it's a way I've done it before, is literally just put water, warm water, nothing else, just warm water in an airbrush and pressure wash clean it. And literally, like you do your car at home, just use water in your actual model to dry it all off and everything else like that, okay? So what we're gonna do is, we'll just use this, just do the turret. So we have to do both sides of the turret because I won't be able to do it singly. And again, it's important to dry it off so you don't leave watermarks. Okay, so you just wanna dry those all off. Then we can fit our gun back on the front. And there we go. Just for you guys, we have a half and half. So we have a, on the close up, a before, and then we have an after. It's completely clean. Now it's only dust, but again, it can be a little bit troublesome. If it's focusing, there we go. So there we go, we have a one. And then as you can see, we've got dust all on the other side. All needs to come off just like that, and there we go. That gives you a good way of doing it. So, what it is, obviously, I'll do the other side in a minute, uh, and then we can have a final review with both of them. But generally, that shows you how I clean my models, it's nothing to it. At the end of the day, it might seem like rocket science, and people sort of overcomplicate with cleaning techniques. Warm water, make sure it's warm as well. Cold water doesn't really work. Warm water and just wiping away. But it's important to go round and wipe it off because you can see how much dirt is on here. So what happens is you've loosened up that dust but it's sitting on the surface and the sponges don't really do much. The sponge is just getting the water on there and rubbing it in a little bit. The actual paper towel takes it all away. So again, always think of it like that. But there we go, that's how I go around and clean all my models. And you know what that means? I'm gonna have to do all the rest of them now. So as you can see, she is all done. This is your final reveal. You can see on the overhead now, hopefully. She's all dried, to be honest. I did that a couple of hours ago now, and it's all dried and finished. And to be honest, it's like new. Again, it's one of those things. This particular one, I don't think we sealed it afterwards. I can't really remember. So when you're going on with it, as long as, if you've used like clay wash and that, as long as you're not really agitated and playing with it too much, you'll be fine. As you notice, as I took it off, it's just lots of swiping movements, things like that going around. I did put the photo etch back on it as well. So that's all on. We put the turret tool in there and stuff. So she's ready to go back on display display uh, up on there but hopefully you can see it's nothing too much it's very very straightforward doing the cleaning process uh, and it's one of those ones where little bits especially props and that jets are so much easier the jets tend to have more aerials um, so you just want to be careful with them and like I did sometimes it's easier just to get in there cut them off before you even get going uh, because otherwise you're only going to lose them so at least you've lost it at your one you can put it somewhere safe and then glue it back on afterwards and you're good to go but there you go and that's probably in the worst environment you're ever going to get normally in your home just dust it wouldn't be as bad as this but because this is in the studio environment and you know even though you've got extractors and stuff like that as we know it still goes airborne and when it's airborne obviously it's going to land on something and then it's going to eat slightly into your model but the clear parts all cleaned up beautifully everything else is really really nice so actually i'm going to have to do the others like i said in the video now because i feel really guilty because i can only imagine what the other two look like so at the weekend i'll probably get them down give them a clean as well and we can make our way through but also it's quite nice because i've even can't even remember really building this one it was so many years ago now and uh, this is the academy kit which is the rebox by Eddard uh, when they did them so yeah really really nice little kit that one brings a lot of memory, fond memories back as well so uh, yeah it's quite nice to get them down give them a clean give them a spruce up they look good you can put them back and you'll be really happy with that one that bite size video is available as well so that's going to be over on the tutorial section on the main site and it'll be on the bite size area on the forum as well obviously i need to upload it various bits and pieces with that one as well which i say i'll either do tonight or i'll do over the weekend as well so that will be up with you as we make our way through uh, there's a couple of things we do need to talk about though because obviously we've got housekeeping things so uh at the moment um obviously we've got some of the group builds are literally coming to an end okay so these are the first group builds of the year i know they've been really really overlooked so apologies obviously the covid thing took over everything as you can imagine so it's going to finish at the end of the month so you've got you know literally what we got now well really if you say three weeks to get them finished off at the moment we've got 125 or 124 builds on the go with that one and then 
obviously you've got 74 currently finished as well okay so that's the thing with that one so it'd be great if you guys can push on with those ones um, again we'll have a good look around these all next week as we make our way through you got a couple months still on the um, bulge to Berlin uh, which obviously is the end of World War II in Europe so we've got that one going on at the moment so you've got till the 31st of August on that one the Covid uh, bill which is ongoing that's going to finish at the end of this month as well as we said really we're just going to run it to the end of the month and that will be it as well so we've got some great finishes in this one we've got 106 uh, that have been completed down in here some of these I won't show some of those because I've added them to the end of the show um, one as well oh my lord what's happened there somebody's cut and pasted uh, but there we go there's a starfighter which looks absolutely fantastic just goes to show old kits on a nice in-flight display. I must admit, that's a strange way of doing it. I've never seen that way before. That's quite smart, that is. Normally, you see them with the acrylic out the bum, but that's actually a very smart way of doing it. Nice job on that one. So again, very, very nice indeed. Cool scheme. Very nice with the Luftwaffe scheme like that as well. So yes. So I suppose with that way, the nice thing is you can see actually up into it, into the exhaust, instead of it being hidden as they normally are with that one. So yes, very, very nice indeed. Very cool. Okay. We've also got, we have a look at another one. We've got the Banshee we looked at as well, but I am a fan of the Banshee. So we have another quick look at it uh, from Gordon. Beautiful stuff. Very, very nice. Again, with that dark blue with a silver scheme. Very, very nice indeed. So good work to him. Um, we've also got a Skyhawk. So we've got John. It's done a very nice little Skyhawk. This is the M1, is it? Is it the M? Yes, because it's got the Marine one with the electronics hump on the back. Very nice indeed. Cool little build. Beautiful work. And last up, because we can finish this one off because it's been completed. One I've been following along from Phil, who's completed the Puma. Uh, which he did the full conversion job to and a great catch because he had a bit of fogging on the inside and managed to clear it out and everything fully updated loads and loads of scratch building into this one and the great thing about this I think it is literally one of those master classes in what we say about using a kit as a base uh, and then you know literally saying okay this gives me the basic shape and everything else and then I can add details to it so what Phil's done with this one is literally just use the skeleton of it almost and then upgrade everything from the rotor head to the sand filters obviously full internal details you name it it's got everything thrown out this one to bring it up to a modern standard Puma instead of one technically from the I think yeah, actually it might be even 70s kit that one uh, it's the old matchbox uh, job but again really very very nice it's a smart looking helicopter it's a great looking scheme as well so congratulations for him for finishing that one off and thank you for doing such a great tutorial walkthrough about doing all the conversion on it as well because it's beautifully photographed and shown exactly how he's gone around that's that gorgeous rotor head uh, that we were looking at on a previous show um, some of the chaff and flare seats uh, for those as well for the way they would go so yeah, really very, very nice indeed. And it just goes to show that, you know, older kits still make fantastic models at the end of the day. So you just need to put the time, the effort in and the work in. And yes, we can all go out and buy Tamiya and just throw it together. But if you do want to spend a little bit of time, you can actually produce something just as good. So uh, good job on that one. Fantastic. Really, really do like that one. Don't forget, obviously, this is going to run to the end of the month. So if you've got anything on the go, get them in. We're going to do a fantastic reveal at the end of it. We'll have a COVID day or something else like that. where We'll be looking at the great work and things like that to make the way through. Don't forget, there's no prizes or medals or anything else like that. That's literally just the group builds. But if you do like them, then fair enough, you can catch them just down in there. And that is about it as i say it's been a funny week so our first week back to normal so it seems a bit funny not having questions and lives and all the rest of it but as i said we've seemed to have our new system seems to be working really well thoroughly thoroughly enjoying it i'm getting a lot more modeling done which is definitely a bit of a bonus on that one at that note just to mention that obviously the pigment sets are back in stock now uh, actually on the actual uh Flory model site so if you want to go off and grab those you can do still waiting on clay to arrive hopefully that'll be in monday so dark dirt wash will be back in stock stock mid to late next week and then hopefully sanders won't be that long either really just waiting to get a feedback for some production dates for when those would be along and then again got to bag them up and do all the labeling and stuff and then i'll get them out to you as we make our way through as always on a friday i'm going to leave you with your great work from the gallery and don't forget we'll be back on with you tomorrow at seven o'clock so until later everybody happy modeling take care